Good morning, you guys. So, um, I'm actually going over a dream right now. I'm doing a dream interpret. Well, actually, I'm not doing a dream interpretation. I'm just documenting the dream. And um, I'm going to title this video How Generational Spirits Work because, oh boy, that is something that the Father has been dealing with me about for like a very, very long time. And um, as I always share, Father mainly deals with me through visions and dreams. That's where I get, I get all my messages, my information, any revelations, exposure. It's all from him through dreams. And in this particular dream, um, some dreams I have, I do get attacks from generational spirits. And then I have some dreams that are not really from the Father. They're more like uh, spiritual monitoring dreams, you know. Um, I guess kind of showing you your spiritual life or you know the um current condition of your life kind of like you have spiritual antennas and a dream is, would be like your spiritual messenger of what's, what's taking place in your life with you personally in the spirit i have dreams like that and i think that this dream kind of seemed like it was one of those possibly mixed with an attack a little bit and um the dream <laughs> mainly dealt with um I always I have several encounters with generational spirits from my bloodline in dreams all the time I've been having encounters with them for years it's a very up close and personal thing I know it's probably crazy coming from me you would think that that would be somebody's situation from like a different culture like you know um more like African culture or Nigerian culture or something but I mean I, I experienced that and um the two entities that were in this dream that serve as generational spirits was my grandmother and my aunt, which they are actually frequently used as generational spirits. And that's why I said in the uh, other video that I recorded when I was at Sister Melanie's house, I have it private right now. I actually share with y'all that I'm going to make it public once I physically leave this place. This is my transition season, so I will not be here for long. But um, I had the scripture, um, a fool utters all his mind, but a wise man keeps it in until afterwards, you know, when it came to that video. Because um, everything I said in the video was true. It's good teaching, it's good information, but because of who you're talking about, it may not be wise for you to have something like that public if you know that you're still going to be encountering these people. And some of them actually watch my channel, which I don't care about. But um, is this just doing things in decency and in order? Um, make sure that you're in the proper environment and that, you know, you are physically in your own home if you're going to be talking about these people like that. Some people don't like to be exposed. It's just a lot of different things. Um, so they're private right now. They're not deleted by any means. So um, they are the main two entities that, um, that are used for generational spirits. And if y'all did watch those videos that I'm talking about, Y'all know that I said that if you keep dreaming about specific relatives, whether the dreams are from the father or whether um, they're from the enemy, the fact that either source is using those people, that's not by coincidence. There's something wrong with that. I would not ignore that at all, even if they are just mere symbols or they're just spirits taking on the form of these relatives. Why are they comfortable using their flesh suit is what you should be questioning. There's something wrong with that. They could be doing witchcraft on you. There is something that God is trying to expose you to expose to you about those particular relatives. You know, demons are not just going to use anybody to take on their form. Um, they could do that. I'm not going to say they never do that. They can use anybody's form in a dream, but they're going to use people that are the, no, the most familiar to you that you'd be comfortable with because they have to deceive you through the dream because that's how you reinstate or create a covenant with familiar spirits through dreams is because um, you open up yourself to the, um, the individual that they come in as, whether it was somebody you had a past relationship with, somebody you had a soul tie with, a relative, a friend, your husband, you know, spirits can come to you as your husband and your wife in dreams, you know, and um, it's really just these demons and um, they can masquerade themselves. Scripture does tell us they can transform themselves into angels of light so they can transform and shape shift into anything, you know, so that they know that you're not going to create a covenant with them through the dream. They come and show you their true selves as these reptilian, disgusting, grotesque creatures, you know, they have to come as somebody that you're familiar with. So, for some reason, I am always familiar with these close relatives and these spirits are successful in the dream every single time. 
and I, I don't understand why that is. I know that one particular relative that's used, she's actually a cousin, and I think that's because I have a fragment or an altar that is connected and bonded with that relative somehow, because any, and it's Jezebel. Anytime Jezebel comes in that cousin's image, I'm just immediately subjected to her. It's a very strange thing. It's almost like my conscious Christian mature self does not have any control in the dream when it's happening. It's like there's some part of me that's still connected to that cousin and Jezebel knows she can continue to just come in her form and I don't even talk to this girl. This is somebody God has exposed to me through several dreams and I don't have anything to do with her. So I don't like the fact that that fragment or whatever that part of me is is still open to that relative like that to where this spirit knows that it can use her in the dream and I'll just always give consent <sighs> it's really annoying but anyway in this particular dream I just wanted to give y'all a little nugget on how generational spirits work what took place in this dream there is an ordained relationship for me I do not share everything on YouTube I don't share a lot of my business on YouTube I share what I want y'all to know there's an ordained relationship for me in this dream and um I noticed that somehow I got like pulled or just kind of lulled away. Maybe that's the wrong term to use if you look at it by definition. But I somehow I got pulled away from this individual that is a God ordained relationship for me. And I ended up in a vehicle with my relatives. Now, I could feel that they were generational spirits, but when you're in the realm of the spirit and you're dreaming like that, I guess it's not as conscious as it would be if you were in your awake life. So. It wasn't to the point where I was like uncomfortable because the whole point in it being a familiar spirit is that you are comfortable with the entities involved. That's why they're familiar spirits, you know. They're familiar to you. <laughs> so I wasn't completely thrown off by it in the dream by me being in the car with them. But at the same time, I could still I knew they were you know, I knew they were generational spirits. It was weird. And the one driving was my grandmother. The one in the passenger seat was my aunt. There were three entities, and the one on the left of me, I think, was the cousin that, uh, that's that been used as a generational spirit as Jezebel for years in several different dreams. And I'm in the back seat, which um, <laughs> I have so many dreams to interpret, and I'm not going to be touching this one anytime soon unless the father leads me to, but I can already see, because I've had a lot of dreams with me being in a back seat and um, in other dreams, and it, it always represented a uh, subjection of being in submission to uh, these other spirits, and the fact that they're driving, and so there's uh, the other entity, the co-partnering generational spirit in the front, that uh, they're driving and navigating your life. You're the one in the back seat, so you're submitted to them somehow. That's not good. But, um... Yeah, and she's on the left of me, and I'm, I'm on the right in the back seat behind the aunt. And uh, the generational spirit, mainly the grandmother, was fussing, and she was arguing, complaining, because she did not want me to be in a relationship with this God-ordained relationship. And um, it was just a lot of... The spirit was very upset, very angry, just... just it, you, know, <laughs> you know what's so interesting about generational spirits? And I don't do a lot of videos about them. Maybe I should. But I've noticed in quite a few on different accounts, they act just like relatives. It's, it's really insane. I was talking to my sisters in Christ about this the other day. I said, you know, I don't think that generational spirits are demons. I, I, I think there's so many different class of demonic entities or ungodly entities. I don't think that all of them are demons. Marine spirits, I know for a fact, are not demons. I've had encounters with marine spirits. I've actually been to the marine kingdom. I've seen what their vehicles look like. That <laughs> They have actual neighborhoods like normal people. They interact like normal people would. Talking, they have rooms. And uh, the actual vehicles, I'm getting off topic. Uh, they're more like aircraft and they land. They have garages like you know you would a car. They just look like humanoids. It's, it's a very strange thing. And um, I don't know what spiritual dimension I was in. I probably had some doors open at that time. But I've been to the Marine Kingdom. And um, they act like people. They're not human. They're not demons. I, I think that sometimes the enemy, I think to build up his army against the Father, you know, when all this comes to a head, I think he has, he's been creating demonic creatures, um, hybrids for the for the demonic army i believe that a lot of them are walking amongst us right now and we would never know because they have the ability to shape shift and um they look human so marine spirits um they are not demons they are not demons by any means i'm not saying that they're not half demon <laughs> you know there's there's definitely some demonic 
DNA somewhere, you know, they're not God's creation, but um, they're completely different. I've, I've encountered so many different classes of spirits that I know for a fact I could feel somehow, I guess, you know, from spirit to spirit, spirit being to spirit being, I could feel they were just different in nature. They act different. They don't act like demons. Demons are a very low grade um, rank in, in Satan's kingdom. They just serve certain purposes. These spirits are completely different. Generational spirits and stuff like that. I don't know. <laughs> those those are not. I don't, I don't think those are demons. But uh, what's always tripped me out about these dreams when I have these encounters with these generational spirits is that they act just like your family. It, it would actually shock you. And y'all have probably actually been having these dreams, you know, with, with your generational spirits from your bloodline. And you would probably concur that they act just like relatives. So the way they were doing it, they weren't, they didn't have demonic behavior. They never do in my dreams. They were just kind of fussing and very discontent and just upset about this God ordained relationship and was, was trying to um, talk me out of it. Complaining against the person, there was a lot of murmuring, a lot of accusation against the person. It was just clear. They, they were just acting like your family members would act if, let's say you brought somebody home that you were dating or something and you were about to get married and the spirits are just, or not the spirits, the family members are just like, oh, we really don't like him. We don't really approve of him. He's this, he's that. Or, you know, he doesn't have a job. He doesn't work. That's kind of how the, that's not kind of, that is how the generational spirits were actually talking to me in the car in the dream. And that was just the whole, like, you know, basis of uh, the situation was I was in the back seat. And I'm just kind of not really in agreement with them or what they're saying because I know that the relationship was in fact a God ordained relationship and I know where I'm supposed to be divine placement wise as a Christian but I had these generational spirits they were clearly upset about the relationship that the father had ordained for me and um they were I did not feel that they had any real power or control to manipulate the circumstances or you know this thing actually coming into fruition I didn't feel that it just felt like um they had some type of they felt a sense of entitlement to me and because this person has or was coming into my life and they did identify it as a God ordained relationship as far as my destiny is concerned they uh they were just not in agreement with it and I'm like well that would make sense because you're from the wrong kingdom <laughs> you know why would they be in agreement why would they approve of their generational spirits why would they approve of a god ordained relationship for you you know so the grandmother's just griping she's just griping in the driver's seat just oh you know you know and uh they're this and that and this this and that and you know you need to just this this and that and um the aunt in the passenger seat that spirit they were all on one accord. All three entities were in, a, in on one accord. I can't remember too much of what that particular entity was doing, but I know that they were in agreement, you know. It was a, a very mutual thing with all three of the spirits, and I was just kind of there to just be there. Like, um, I wasn't being manipulated or swayed by their decisions. I think I was actually standing my ground, and I said, well, no, the Father wants me to be in this friendship or this god ordained relationship. And that's where I'm going to be. So no, I did not feel like they had any power to stop me. I didn't feel like it was a intimidating, threatening, you know, type of thing. It was just, uh, I could feel that they had some sense of territory and entitlement. And um, they felt entitled to me because of maybe some, could be an evil altar. I, I honestly, I couldn't tell you, but they feel entitled to me personally. So, um... A generational spirit's purpose, and I'm, I'm going to get into this, but uh, the point is they were driving me away from the individual. The individual, I, at the because the dream started off with me being with the um, companion in the beginning of the dream, and somehow I got pulled over spiritually into this car with the generational spirits, and they were driving me away from the person. I mean, a far distance away. <laughs> you know, they're griping and griping and griping, and uh, they actually took me to two past relationships and they were telling me in the dream we'll take you back to these friends here we'll take you back to you know to these they literally took me to the individual's house these are god ordained relationships i had in the past that god has already excommunicated he's already cut off and i got a chance to literally physically see the people the, the generational spirits took me to the people's houses to their uh, locations and they were telling me if you just cut this one off and if you don't have anything to do with this new one, we'll give you these two right here or we'll bring these back. 
And um, the first companion that I saw, it was a friend from like years ago, it was a guardian relationship, and I got a chance to see their eyes look like they were sealed shut. You know, and um, I had assumed years ago that's probably what happened because they disobeyed the Lord in some area when it came to our relationship. And um, it just looked like they, it was a confirmation that they just spiritually fell off. Their eyes were shut, like their, their spiritual eyes were closed. And um, the generational spirits are basically trying to take me back, <laughs> regression, you know, saying how, oh, we'll give you these friends or we'll give you these companions if you just don't have anything to do with this one. And then it took me to the, uh, the other entity's house right after that. <sighs> and um, my whole thing was just like, no, like this is where I'm supposed to be. This is my divine placement. This is the relationship that God wants me to be in. I'm going to be with this individual here. And um, so, no, I, I didn't feel like the generational spirits had any power to stop me. I didn't feel like they could really control the narrative or anything. It was just they were really upset. It felt like they were trying to get me to do it, you know. So I thought that was very interesting. And that's why I wanted to do this video, because um, we don't know a lot about generational spirits. There's some Christians that teach about it. Thank God that he deals with me about this stuff so I can actually come and share it with y'all. Um, y'all may be having y'all's own dreams. You just may not understand what the heck they are. But um, the role that generational spirits play from what I'm learning from y'all is um, I think sometimes we can have the idea, or at least I used to, when I was doing warfare for my previous word of marriage based on dreams that the, uh, the father would give me about this individual and his bloodline, um, I saw a lot of high-ranking spirits. I actually encountered them, you know, and they would always be attacking me both through him and um, just in the spirit because I was meant to be an assignment to that individual to help them get delivered from that witchcraft and from that family bondage and stuff. And um, it was clear to me that they had a lot of power and control over his decisions, the manipulation of his mind, a lot of mental illness and stuff that was going on in that area. And that's what I was always constantly doing warfare against. So because of that experience, I did kind of have the idea, um, kind of like a defeated mindset when it came to generational spirits, because depending on who the individual is and how much power they have over that bloodline and the person themselves, they could be looked at as this big powerful principality or these high ranking spirits that um, if you are the appointed and anointed vessel that God is putting in that person's life to get them delivered from those family curses, and um, those evil altars, whatever territorial rights those spirits have to this individual that God is trying to use you to help, they will wage war against you like crazy. You will be under constant demonic oppression. You will be under constant attacks because they know who you are and they know what purpose that you serve. You're there to take that person up out from under their clutches. So I do think that in some cases it can have that big powerful effect. Um, or you can see these generational spirits as just these big, you know, Ursula, you know, from the area of the Little Mermaid type of entities. And um, that's what you're coming up against. And to be honest, if it's Jezebel in the bloodline, she is a sea spirit. So, I mean, they probably do look like that. It probably is what you're coming up against. But you have, uh, you're more powerful and triumphant in Christ over them anyway. So um, that's probably why the attack feels so heavy against you being in that word, whether it be a word of marriage or um, just, just just that assignment alone. You can feel the witchcraft coming up against you because this person probably has a lot of dark marine powers in their life and in their bloodline. And those spirits are targeting you because they know that uh, what you're here to do. In my situation, I have never seen my personal, uh, the, well, I don't want to say mine, I don't want to claim them. The generational spirits in my bloodline, I have never identified them to be any big, powerful entities. They always seem like a witchcraft spirits. Um, obviously, they've been here for a long time. Apparently, there's sex slavery in my ancestry as well. That's something I've been dealing with with Jezebel. That's what she wants to put me into. I'm dealing with that, <laughs> you know, and this is all, you know, revealed uh through dreams from the father and it's, it's crazy to me to be honest I've seen some crazy stuff I've had him take me in the spirit to some ancestors house I'm walking around the house in the spirit it, I mean just as clear as day don't even feel like you're dreaming looking at pictures that are in black and white and he's showing me things about these ancestors and you know to give me an understanding of why I deal with what I deal with and apparently I've seen sex trafficking and slavery in a few of the dreams often and um, witchcraft 
I don't I don't know what kind of witchcraft or what kind of occultism, but it is on my grandfather's side. There's a part of me that wants to talk to him so bad, <laughs> but I mean, God has exposed him to be in agreement with the Jezebel spirit, so I don't even think that would serve any purpose. He would just probably lie and, you know, manipulate the situation. So I don't think God is leading me to do that. It's just my, my you know, responsibility to interpret the dream with the Holy Spirit so I can get the revelation he's trying to give me. It's not always wise for you to go to the people, especially if they're not in the Lord. They're not going to comply with that. People, um... And that's something I've always said. When God shows you something about people exposure-wise and you go to the person, nine times out of ten, this person is not going to open up and be like, oh, everything God told you about me is true. <laughs> you know, unless this is a sister in the Lord or she's a, a true or there's a true brother. You know, people actually have some, you know, an honest trait and bone in their body. These people are not going to be honest with you about what God has shown you. They're going to try to do all this gaslighting and make you feel like you're crazy. Satan is giving you dreams. You're delusional. You're schizophrenic. Uh, oh, oh, that's just not true. They'll try to, you know, play it off. I'm like, there's nothing to play off, honey. I'm very much connected to the source that is the Lord Jesus Christ. I know when he shows me something and I believe it. It, it really amazes me the level of deceit and lying that people have in their hearts. Like, to be that dishonest when God himself has exposed you to somebody, I, I will never understand that. I always say, if somebody came to me today and said, hey, Sister Brandy, you know, God showed me you feel this way about me, I'd be like, well, he told you the truth. <laughs> I mean, like, I, I, I don't, I'm not a liar. I, I don't, I don't understand that, you know, like, um, the word already says that everything done in the dark will come to light. Um, everything hidden will be made manifest. Everything is already naked and laid bare before the Father. So I don't understand why people somehow conceive in their minds that God does not expose them to people. Especially if you know for yourself that you are an enemy of this individual that he is exposing you to. You know what your motives are. You know how wicked you are. You know what you think about them. You know you don't really care about them. You don't love them. You've been slandering them behind their back and gossiping about them. And you a family member or whoever you are. And it's just like, you know, you think that this person being a Christian and being God's daughter or his son, that he's not going to reveal that information to them to protect themselves from you. P people are very weird. It's just a strange, very, they're, they're religious when they want to be. But when it comes to God exposing them, you're crazy. Oh, he would never show you that. God don't show people stuff. I had, I've heard that too. God don't show people stuff like that. I say, well, honey, you don't know God. Clearly, he stay exposing people. And you know, God forbid you be a seer. You're going to be seeing 24-7 all up in everybody's business. I don't have the Father show me stuff about people I don't even talk to. I'm just like, I don't want to see that. That's disturbing. <laughs> That's a little bit too much, you know. I mean, I pray for him, but it's, it's always uh, due to, you know, me and my connection with him. He doesn't just go around exposing, you know, people's personal life unless it's just very necessary for you to know certain things. And, you know, it pertains to you in some matter. But, um, yeah, the generational spirits in my bloodline, they always seem to just be uh, just familiar spirits, just witchcraft spirits. They've never been these huge big principality you know intimidating figures um i cannot say that if someone were to come into my life because i've never personally been somebody's assignment i've always been the one assigned to these individuals to help them <laughs> you know so i can't say that um me, me me being the mature christian that i am um if somebody were to come into my life and i was their assignment that they would have this huge war on their hands. Um, no, I don't see that at all. I know too much. I've seen too much. The Father has taught me a lot. I probably would be able to cooperate with that individual for my own personal deliverance, but it wouldn't be a situation to where the, the girl is just bound and, you know, they just have her and she just can't. <laughs> you know, like, it's, it's not like that. Now, there are some demons and um, familiar spirits that can have that kind of control over certain altars that you may be dealing with. And when that altar resurfaces, you could kind of have like some resistance, you know, when it comes to that uh, that brother, that sister. But no, I've never seen them as these. Uh... And Jezebel, she's here. And I know that um, I've seen her in many different forms. And I don't know if she has the ability to shape shift or if she just has a lot of different classes of marine spirits under her that come to harass us and I always identify it as the Jezebel spirit. I had a sister tell me, I think it was uh, 
I'm not going to say her name, but uh, I had a sister tell me that a father actually showed her Jezebel in the sea after we had done a particular uh, warfare prayer together collectively as a group. And uh, she said she rose out of the sea and she was a huge um, sea creature. She was she was a woman, you know, it was a female spirit, but she, she said she was very big. And I think she said her hair was like a fiery red. She looked very pissed. She looked annoyed. Like uh, something we had prayed, <laughs> I guess it worked because uh, there was smoke. I guess she was trying to do something operation-wise and our, our intercession sent smoke in her domain and she said that Jezebel rose out of the waters and she was very upset and angry and she just looked like a, I forgot how she said it. If she watches this video, she could probably, you know, elaborate a little bit more than I can. But, um, no, I've never seen her that way. Um, I'm not saying she isn't. Maybe she just comes to me in different forms. To I, I don't know. Uh, I've been in bodies of water with her as a mermaid, a very big one, several times. I've seen her as a witch, uh, threatening to force me into the occult if I don't yield to her. I've seen that. I've, I've had her chase and pursue me in forests and um, bodies of water that I don't know how I ended up getting there. I've, I've seen her in many, many different forms. So she's definitely in my bloodline. That is something the Father has confirmed to me 100% personally. So um, what I learned from this dream is... Because as I was writing it down, sometimes Holy Spirit, he'll be giving me revelation before I actually begin interpreting, like writing wise. I'll just jot the notes down as it kind of comes. And I said, well, that's interesting that you're in the car with them. And it, uh, it's, it's, it's more like they were trying to persuade you away from this individual more than controlling you and saying, you're not going to do this. Now, I, I have a sister who also deals with generational spirits, and uh, they actually do tell her that. And uh, when she encounters them, you know, they'll do everything that they can before they allow her to get married, you know, and uh, they'll stop it. They'll do anything to stop it, you know. So the spirits will tell her that in the dream. So I thought it was very interesting that um, these particular entities, it was more like a persuasion type of thing or um, just a murmuring and a complaining um against the individual you know saying they would give me I guess counterfeit you know friendships or counterfeit you know companionships if I just didn't go this direction I'm just like the thing with me is just like if you know that I'm a Christian and you know my place you know in the Lord why are you <laughs> why would you think that I'm going to listen to you <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I don't know but anyway so um that that's what stood out to me is was the persuasion that was involved and the complaining and the murmuring and the accusing and the holy spirit just said to me he said you know um well it, it, it manifested as a thought so i was like maybe it's not so much that generational spirits are these big threatening entities in your bloodline that dictate the circumstances and relationships of your life they do do that but Maybe their manifestation in your life is more as like an influence because they are familiar spirits. They've been in your bloodline for a very long time. So they know your DNA. They know your ancestry. So that means that whoever your ancestors are, your parents, your grandparents, your great grandparents, great, 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 and, you know, you know, going on, um, they have been skilled and they are comfortable and They've been doing it for a long time with manipulating the thoughts, emotions, and decisions and outcomes of your ancestors' lives, their relationships, the, um, uh, their choices. That's their job. If somebody in your ancestry going back centuries has created a covenant with certain spirits, those spirits have legal right to your bloodline and to their descendants. And so you can have, uh, let's say your ancestor from about 89 BC, okay, was an occultist, you know, they were worshiping Baal, <coughs> Jezebel, whatever, and uh, they have a covenant with Jezebel. And uh, I don't know how deep occultism goes and all the many things that take place specifically, but I, I, I mean, by default, um, your descendants and your seed, the fruit of your womb, also has a covenant with this spirit, correct? So, the children come. 
and the grandchildren and the great grandchildren. Now we're here to 2019, okay? You can have descendants that are not raised and brought up in that same acknowledgement of the family pattern that was occultism. They may not even be involved in that, but the curses and the entitlement and the control of that generational spirit is still operating and functioning in that bloodline. So how that's going to affect the descendants in the bloodline is it's going to be the same curses. If it was adultery, if that was an issue, honey, your whole family is going to be some hoes. It will be even the Christian ones. You're going to have Christian hoes. And I'm speaking from personal experience because Jezebel has personally had tried to lead me into adultery, homosexuality on many occasions, um, drugs. Just, just I, I know what generational curses are in my bloodline because I have literally felt a demonic compulsion to do these things when I knew that it was not really me. So I don't care how saved you are because you can be a Christian a true Holy Spirit filled Christian that really means well and is really trying to live by Yah. And if you have these curses in place in your bloodline, you will be struggling for the rest of your life because both of those entities will be wrestling and doing tug of war over you. Because you got a covenant with Yah, which is, you know, the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, you're a Christian, and you still got a covenant with these marine spirits over here because you didn't break it legally. Satan is really big on legalities. You getting saved does not automatically sever you from generational curses and covenants and contracts or agreements that you have maybe not you directly but by default you have them because your ancestors had these covenants and they just keep getting passed on passed on with this spirit and sometimes it's multiple spirits you know uh, fault the thing about false god worship is that you know most pagans they worship many gods so you can have several different principalities tied to your bloodline and they feel very much entitled to you because unbeknownst to you that's they feel like you belong to them they've been in your bloodline they've had a covenant with your ancestors for like thousands of years you don't know you belong to them <laughs> okay so they the thing that trips me out about them that i've personally experienced in dreams is that they actually feel in a sense of entitlement to you i, I mean to us it's a sense of delusion because it's like i don't know you i don't know nothing about no i'm just now finding out about this stuff like you know i'm fasting and praying to god on why i can't get a job or why i can't do this and that and he starts showing me stuff i don't know you they know you <laughs> okay they know your great granddaddy they know you know your aunt bell from a thousand years ago okay so they 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 know you they identify with your bloodline to them that's a purchase and that's a possession to them you belong to them which you know it just brings more understanding to the whole thing about jesus you know redeeming us if you know redeem is a hebrew term it was somebody that was uh previously owned by somebody else or that was sold into slavery because they could not pay or they couldn't uh, afford to you know um they couldn't afford to really, you know, provide for themselves or their family. So they, you know, they become a slave to some, uh, to another Israelite. And if another relative is more rich or they're able to buy them back, it's called redeeming that relative. So that's what Jesus did for us. So realistically, we don't know that we belong to Satan and his principalities. It's true. You do. That's why they fight over you when you try to get delivered from certain.